Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good morning. State lawmakers are packing up to head south for 140 days. Tuesday at noon, the legislature reconvenes. This one will look different. No doubt the politics will be different as well. Our guests this morning, two veteran state senators, Kelly Hancock, a Republican from North Richland Hills, and Royce West, a Dallas Democrat. And joining the question, as always, is Bud Kennedy of the Star-Telegram. Happy New Year, guys. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Good morning. Are you ready? We're ready. ready for Tuesday? We're ready. Well, let, let's talk about some of the politics there. North Texas replaced two Republican state senators with two Democrats. Tell us how that impacts the dynamics in that chamber. Kelly, we'll start with you. Well, you know, that been one of them had been a Democrat seat before the Republicans took it, and so... Uh, really, in essence, basically what you end up with of the 31 senators, Republicans are at 19 and, you know, Democrats are at 12, so it, it changed by one. It, it, it narrows things a tad, though. I mean, we lost, they lost Don and Don Huff Fines and uh, Connie Burton as well. And picked up a seat it, in it, San Antonio. It, right. Yeah. It, so it, it changed it, by it, one. It, the, the net, the net is, is small, though, but I've talked to you multiple times, Senator West, about Democratic influence and how tough it always has been. You always said, just wait. Well, I, I, you know, and we're going to have to wait a little longer, and, and, and that's, that's the reality. Um, but I think that the, there'll be issues that we will work together on. I think that uh, public school finance is a bipartisan issue that we'll be able to work together on. Well, let's talk about property taxes. That's the one that's going to sting everybody this month. They kind of go together. They, they do absolutely go together. Um, property taxes, the, the uh, uh, legislation didn't pass in the regular session in 2017. It didn't pass in the special session either. Will both chambers come to an agreement, do you think? Well, I think, you know, the good news for us going in is that you have the governor, lieutenant governor, and the incoming speaker, who we anticipate being the speaker, uh, Dennis Bonin, all on the same page, all saying the same thing. Uh, and I think their conversations um, and, and all the work that's been done. I was set on, we had 18 interim committees. I sat on 12 committees during the interim. I went on being property tax reform and a lot of progress was made. So I think you'll see multiple pieces of legislation. Property tax is an issue in my district. It's an issue in his district. It's a bipartisan issue that we both agree need to be fixed. And frankly, we've got a history of working together. And, and the reality is this. I, I think, and all of us know that the greatest portion of your property tax is gonna be school tax, right. 53%. The question is, is whether the state is willing to put more general revenue, state funding, into our school systems to buy down, if you will, those property tax rates. Uh, I also believe that when we begin to look at the 2.5 percent issue, uh, cities, municipalities, uh, counties, they don't want us involved in that. They want to keep it uh, as a local issue. Here's the question. Uh, most of us understand and appreciate our first responders. We also understand that an inordinate amount of the dollars that are spent locally in cities of this uh, size of Dallas is probably 60, 65 percent. Do we allow that? Do we do a carve out, if you will, uh, in terms of the 2.5 percent cap as it relates to monies necessary in order to fund that? And so cities don't have to worry about that 60, 65 percent. Right. So, you know, Kelly, there, there are ways that we can take a look at Kelly, that. do you support buying down, spending more state money on education, buying down what, what we're all paying for property taxes yeah, and education? Yeah, I think what we clearly have seen is that people can't uh, handle the the growing escalation of the property taxes. It's growing at a much higher rate than population inflation. Right. Uh, and so, you know, what's happened is we balanced that out several years ago, and then the state's portion was 50 percent. What's happened is local property appraisals have grown at nearly twice the rate of inflation, while government spending at the state level has maintained an inflation and population level. So you're having local property tax growth at twice the rate of the state spending, which gets you from a 50-50 position, which we were in back when I was on the school board, to now it's a 60-40 because, frankly, the, the state, and I don't think my voters want me to keep up with spending at the level that their appraised values are going up and their, and their property taxes are going up. So you got to hold down that local uh, revenue growth so that you can keep the state portion equal, and then you come in with an additional dollars at the state level. You know, the governor had a, a tweet last week about doing away with the Robin Hood system, uh, the, the, that bad old Robin Hood system. The recapture system. The recapture system. It is, is doing away with Robin Hood, uh, does that mean doing away with equity? You know, uh, I think that's got to be on the table. 
because when you have like Dallas, Houston, now in the recapture system, recognize the complexity of the educational issues that they have, there's a problem with that recapture system. And so that has to be on the table. And that's, does everyone need to be out of that system? I don't know. Uh, but I know that was pro part of the discussion that we had with the commission, and we are looking at that issue because right now we recognize that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Kelly, will we still come out of this with a system where all the kids have the same amount of money? I, well, right now you don't have all you, the kids having the same right. amount of money. Right and so right now, right. will we have equity? Yes, the courts have required us to have equity. So it's got to be an equitable system. But an equitable system, uh, the Robin Hood rec the recapture program has just been a disaster. And nobody anticipated mm -hmm. growing at the rate it is growing today. And frankly, it's because our urban areas are so expensive to live in today that families can't live in there and so their property values are high, their number of students is low, therefore you have this huge recapture that's impacting Houston, Dallas, Austin, Austin. and it just doesn't work anymore. And so equi do we have to be equitable? Yes. Do we have to find a new system? Absolutely. In the middle of all this, I looked, uh, Dan Patrick at his campaign said he wants to give every teacher a $10,000 raise. Do you have that money? Well, you know, it, uh, it's going to be interesting to figure out where we get the money. I mean, the governor, and I agree with him, if we can find where we can get teachers, some teachers, over at six figures, I'd be, I, I'd be right in line with that. We, we've got to redo the way we're doing things because we're not getting the results that we that we need and that's not a democrat or republican issue but we've got to look at things that we believe actually work we've got to look at people in the areas that are being effective to get ideas from and give those ideas an opportunity well, also and Roy, that's in your backyard you look at dallas county and what disd is doing when it comes to teacher and the ACE, pays. The ACE program. i mean right. it allows teachers to make the kind of money that teachers deserve to make a career ladder where you're purely paying based on years of service just doesn't work Gentlemen, we are out of time. There's a lot to talk about. It's just now beginning down there in Austin. 140 days over with already? We have, yeah, what, 142 <laughs> out right now. Thanks so much, uh, Kelly Hancock and Royce West, for coming in. Good luck to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.